Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Freedom Homestead. I'm Tangi, and as you can see, I have been to the nursery and have bought a bunch of garden plants. What makes your garden grow? Water and sunshine. What makes your spirit grow? Knowing that should be mine. I've started mine too late. I'm ready to get stuff in the ground. So I just went ahead, bit the bullet, and went and got some plants. So, y'all, this was so cheap. Um, each tray holds 48 plants, and it's like $17, less than $17 for a tray. So that's incredible. Um, anyway, so I got some, let me show you what I got. Okay, so I got a bunch of Amish paste tomatoes. I also got some, I got one tr uh, cell of, or I got some ox hearts, and I also got, what was the other thing I got? I got, is this it? No, that's the cabbage. Seems like I got another kind, but I'm not seeing it. Uh, anyway, I got Amish paste and ox heart tomatoes. The ox heart are slicer tomatoes, and of course, Amish paste are a Roma. Um, I got some jalapeno peppers. I got some cabbages. I got three different kinds. I got this stonehead cabbage. I got early uh, Dutch, and I got some red acre cabbage. Uh, over here in this tray, and I'm talking fast because I'm trying to beat the rain. Um, <clears throat> Here I've got some uh, pepperoncini. I got some California Wonder Bells, and I also got some sweet bell peppers. Where are they? Yes, I got or some sweet banana peppers. Um, then for herbs, these were more. These were four dollars a thing. I won't do that again. Um, anyway, this is some Italian oregano. We've got some basil. I've got some thyme, some rosemary, and some cilantro. So I'm going to rush and get as much of this in the ground as I can before the rain sets in. Uh, I think I'm gonna start with the tomatoes first. All right, so I've got that in. So yeah, so I've got 16 tomato plants, uh, four ox heart, four mortgage lifters, and the rest are Amish paste. I've got them set 18, huh? Uh, I've got them set 18 inches apart and then my overflow if you guys remember I said I wasn't sure what I was gonna put hey, let me zoom out here I wasn't sure what I was gonna put on this uh, row that I would probably use it for overflow if I had any and that's exactly what I'm doing so these are all Amish paste here um, what I'll probably do is I will probably tie these up um, Florida weave style which is where you set a uh, tea post or you know some sort of stake and then you take jute string and you just weave it in and out and that supports your tomato plants and that's what I did for years before we could afford to buy cattle panels. Anyway, I wanted to show you really quick how I am planting uh, these plants. These are nursery plants and you can tell um, that they're not, they're not straight plants. Um, there's a bend, whoops, there's a bend in the stalk. And so in case you run into something like that, I just want to show you really quick how, uh, how to plant that. It's, it's really not difficult. You just have to get creative. Okay. So first I'm going to start by digging my hole and I dig it pretty deep. Um, it'll be deep enough to go probably to about right here to this first node. Um, and so any leaves, uh, that are going to be below where I, I plant it, I'm going to just um, pinch those off. Okay, so let me get my hole dug and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. So like I said, I'm going pretty deep. And the purpose for this is uh, when you plant your tomato plants, anywhere that they are um, buried, they will develop roots and you really want a good strong root system because um, that's what's going to give it nourishment that is also what's going to keep it in the ground when you have a strong wind okay so that's nice and deep i know a lot of folks that put all different kinds of uh, fertilizing concoctions in with their tomatoes 
I keep it super simple. Um, I just use trifecta. This is from MI Gardener. If you use my code TCW10, you can save 10%. Um, and I just get a handful and I just put it right down in the hole. And then uh, this will feed it for a few months. And sometimes I'll come back with more trifecta or if I have to use the Burpees organic tomato and vegetable feed, I will. Um, but that's, that's pretty much what I do. Okay, so let me show you how we're gonna plant this. This is gonna be kind of hard with my doing it. I don't have the tripod out here with me. Okay, so I'm just kind of mixing that um, fertilizer in with the dirt. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually going to lay my plant in like this and then it's gonna stick out at the top so you see where it's in the bend like that I'm just gonna let it instead of trying to plant it like that I'm gonna plant it like that see what I'm saying hopefully that's easy to see good morning it is actually the next day and I did try to show y'all what I did yesterday but it was so windy you could barely hear me so I'm gonna refilm it um, so let me just give you a quick walk about um i'm hoping today we've got we might have uh some heavy storms moving through today hopefully not but um what i'm hoping and i'll okay so i'm going to show you what i got done and then tell you what i hope to get done today and then of course i'll give you another update if i do get it done there's jack yeah you can definitely tell that everything perked up once they got a good amount of rain so the tomato plants look good here's these the pepper plants look really, really good. Uh, there's a volunteer pumpkin. I might let some of these just do their thing. We'll see. Um, yeah, there's uh, birds have been out here and you can tell they are picking off the leaves. So we'll have to come up with something with that. Um, there's all of those. So I counted and I think I have, uh, if I remember correctly, I have 36 or 38 tomato plants planted in all. So over here, uh, we've got, uh, of course, the jalapeno plants uh, planted there. And then I had an overflow of cabbage, so I put one there and I put one down there. And I plan on mulching this uh, with some wood chips. Sit. That's a good girl. That's such a good girl. Yes. Oops, come here. Ah, oh, that's a good girl. I don't want you chasing the Amish. Yeah, all right. So this is what I got done yesterday. I did end up getting this tilled and we have uh, two rows of cabbage. And I've, uh, yeah, and it looks really good. I've got my hoops in there because I've got some uh, mesh netting I'm going to put over it to hopefully hopefully keep the white moths away um, and then in between I've got some uh, thick uh, wood chips down I, I ran out of cardboard but I'll be getting some more so I can finish that out that looks really really good I'm very very happy with how this turned out um, so that is what we've got done so far and then of course the herbs uh, and the tower look really good and yeah sorry I, don't, I look so disheveled anyway um so my plan today is uh hopefully to get the cattle panels put up to get the uh these mesh um trellises zip tied i need to put in the um the trellises for the new tomatoes that's pretty much what i'm planning on doing today and if the weather holds out, I've got to get those uh, potatoes planted that I've had <laughs> sprouting downstairs. And um, I've been doing some research. And since we have all of these wood chips, um, I'm going to try to grow them in the wood chips. So I just got to figure out my bed situation. I thought about just like kind of building a bed with chicken wire and T-posts. Um, or just doing it on top of the ground. I haven't decided yet. Um, but anyway, I'll bring you, I'll bring you along maybe in a separate video, uh, and show you how I do that. And then we'll follow along together throughout the year and see if it works. Good morning, everybody. These allergies are kicking my tail and I just about don't have a voice, but I wanted to show you 
um, what else we've gotten done. Uh, we've got the pepper, the jalapeno pepper bed mulched. We put some chicken wire over the stra strawberries to keep the birds out. It's really frustrating finding a gorgeous, plump, ripe strawberry only to turn it over and see that it's been pecked by the birds. We've got the bug netting over the uh, over the cabbages. And again, it's mostly for the birds. I know that's not gonna keep all the bugs out, but uh, they, they really do need some water though. Um, everything's looking great in the green stock. I planted another tomato plant that is a cherry tomato plant. Can't remember what it's called. There's the other tomato plant. That's the tiny Tim. I think that's the berry crazy cherry cherry tomato. Got some um, radishes coming up here. Some onions coming up here. The trellis is zip tied, so they'll be nice and strong. These tomato plants, these are the ones I got from my friend Kimberly, and they are looking really, really nice. Really, really good. Over here in the garlic bed, we have harvested some of these radishes. Um, it's weird because I normally have, you know, lots of lettuce and spinach and peas and radishes, but just got a late start, but that's okay. We have the fall, so we'll enjoy it then, but the garlic is looking really good. All right, so we've got all the tomatoes and peppers mulched in. And what I have here, this is probably not necessary, but we've been having a couple of really windy days. And so all I did was I tied some jute from the base of the, the base of the tomato plant to the bottom rung of the cattle panel. And all I'm doing is I'm twisting the plant so that way as it gets longer, <clears throat> it will train to go up that way. And then we'll just start weaving the limbs of the tomato plants in and out. I actually tried to film this uh, yesterday, but it was so windy you couldn't hear me. But these are all looking really, really good. I do have one more tomato plant. That's a... a Italian uh, Martino Roma that I need to find a place for. Some of the beans are starting to pop up. We really need to come through here and water again. <clears throat> There's another bean plant right there. None of the okra has popped up yet, but it takes a little while and I can tell I need to come through here with my push-pull hoe, knock out some of this grass before it gets crazy. any okra yet. Um, I am going to let this pumpkin um, do its thing. <laughs> so I just left it and mulched around it. So we'll see. These tomato plants look really good. This is where I did the Florida weave. And basically what you do is you tie one end of the jute string to your support. Then you come and you, <clears throat> you bring it over and you wrap it around the limb and then you wrap it around the limb. And then that just helps hold the plant up. And this actually does a pretty decent job. I've did this for years with tobacco sticks. And unfortunately what would happen is the, um, the tobacco sticks would break under the weight of all the tomatoes which is why I decided to use these T-posts. But these look really, really good. And if you remember, when I planted these, I just put some trifecta in with it um, from In My Gardener. Nothing else, just trifecta. And of course, I will come through here and feed it more. These are the triple L crop. They're looking really good. Um, I don't see any of the cucumbers popping up yet, but again, we really, really need to water this in again. I don't see any squash yet, but again, I'm sure once it gets enough watered in a good time, it will, they will pop up. But I did notice 
some of the pinto beans are coming up. I really hope this works out. I would love to be able to grow a year's worth of pinto beans <laughs> knowing that I did it. That'd be so cool. Um, I don't see any of the corn popping up yet either. Since it's so nice outside, I went ahead and what I have started, I've gone ahead and brought out. Um, and this is probably where they'll stay until they're ready to plant. My zinnias, marigolds, herbs, pep some of the peppers, tomatoes. Um, I'll just leave them out here. Well, happy Saturday morning. Uh, for those of you who are new around here, garden season means you are gonna be seeing me fresh out of the bed with my coffee in the garden. So get used to it. <laughs> so uh, I just got back from being gone for a whole week. Uh, my company sent me out to Pontiac, Michigan for a week to do some training. You guys know that the last couple of months uh, I have been training uh, as a loan processor. And so I got to go to Pontiac, Michigan to United Wholesale Mortgage. They had a new processor uh, class. It was two weeks, one week virtual, one week in person. And uh, so I just got back last night. I had a great time, met some really awesome people, learned a ton, like my brain is goo pretty much. Um, and so, but here at home in the bluegrass at the homestead, it rained all week. So Jack was not able to come out and stay on top of the weeds. Um, and so last night when I came home, we spent some time picking uh, the strawberries and um, yeah, and just kind of assessing what needs to happen. Right now it's too wet to do anything, but we're supposed to have a really nice weekend. So hopefully by Monday, hopefully, hopefully, um, this will be dry enough that I can come through here and uh, take care of some weeding. You can see we've got grass now growing in some of the uh, rows. So I'm gonna turn you around and show you what everything looks like. All right, so let me show you what is happening in the Freedom Garden. So like I said, we had a whole week of rain while I was gone. So we've got grass popping up, we've got weeds to uh, take care of, but it's too wet to do anything right now. Um, but Jack was able to this week, he picked up some cardboard for us and he laid it down this row and, uh, and then put a thick bed of wood chips on top. So we can definitely walk down this row, which is perfect because our tomato plants are doing wonderfully and I need to go through here and pinch the suckers off. We do have a rogue uh, pumpkin vine that is growing right there. I think we're just gonna let it go, see what happens. That's a pumpkin? Yeah, most likely. Um, we put our chickens here in the garden area over the winter and I did feed them some pumpkins and so there will be some pumpkins growing through here and we'll just see what they do. Um, okay, so yes, our, our tomatoes are doing great. I need to go through and pinch the suckers off uh, and then wrap them around the jute. You don't have to do this. I just did it to kind of help pull or train the tomato plants to go toward the cattle panel. And then once it uh, gets long enough, we can just weave the vines in and out of the cattle panel. You saw when I planted the tomato plants, I just added a little bit of Trifecta Plus from MI Gardener, which uh, my code is down in the description box below if you want to save 10% on your MI Gardener order. And I just put a little bit in each hole as I planted these and they're feeding the tomato plants and they look wonderful. Found a snake. Tangy loves these. <laughs> well, I love them if they keep the birds away. Um, then down here, we've our green beans are coming up uh, kind of sparsely, but they're coming up. And then down here, you can see our okra are popping up. Very excited about that. I do need to go through here and thin out the uh, seedlings. And then I do see lots of weeds that um, we need to take care of. But as these plants get bigger, I will come through here and add wood chips to help with the weed pressure. Down here, our peppers look fantastic. We've got jalapenos, we've got 
pepperoncinis, we've got bell peppers, we've got banana peppers. All of these look good. Down here, the birds have been um, clipping them, which is why we have the rubber snake. So yeah, those look good. Uh, the pepperoncini plants there at the end have blossoms on them. Uh, I've got two tomato plants right here that are looking really good. Down there of this aisle, um, I've got collard greens planted and I saw that some of those have popped up as well. These tomato plants, again, looking really great. I need to come through here. Uh, these are, uh, I'm tying them up using the Florida weave method and I need to um, go through there and add some jute to it. Ruger, get out of the garden. Out, out, out. Ruger, out. <clears throat> and then we do have some cucumbers that have popped up. Right here is our pinto beans. They are doing really well. These are actually uh, seeds that I saved from our garden last year. We did not, or two years ago, sorry. Um, we did not eat any of the beans that I grew uh, two years ago because pinto beans, they don't, they're not as prolific as purple whole peas. And so, um, yeah, I just, all the, I just saved all of my beans that I grew. Uh, right there beside it, those are some mammoth gray striped sunflowers. Those are popping up. And then on down is a uh, straight neck yellow squash and zucchini. And those are starting to pop up. Very excited about that. These last two rows are our peaches and cream corn. And as you can see, those are also popping up. And like I said, there's a lot of weed action, which we will take care of as soon as this dries up a little bit. All right, uh, the garlic is looking really good. I harvested um, more of the radishes yesterday. And so uh, as soon as we get all of those harvested, I will of course be planting some things here. Um, but yeah, the garlic, looks really good and it will be uh, time to harvest it pretty soon. All right, here we have some Italian Romas and Martino Romas. They look fantastic. I'm going to try to uh, start weaving these into the trellis and of course they also have some suckers to take care of. They look fantastic. I've got a couple of cabbages and jalapenos over here. They look great, except for the ones that, I mean, you can see the birds are just tearing these up, but hopefully, hopefully I will have some peppers off of these. I've got another cabbage down here that's doing really well. So I do have a rubber snake, but he's not doing his job. Put it right, maybe right here where they can actually see it. Okay. All right, now over here I have watermelon, uh, sugar baby watermelons and um, black Russian sunflowers planted, but they have not popped up yet. So we will have to see what happens there. I may have to replant this bed. We will see. I do have some uh, watermelon plants started. So if I don't see anything happening here, I may just do put those in here. This bed is still empty. We need some compost. Uh, the strawberries are doing really well. Uh, we har oh, my shadow. We harvested. You can see I've got my coffee. Um, anyway, we harvested some last night when I got in from Michigan. Like I said, uh, the green stock looks really good. The herbs look fantastic. I think I need to feed the tomato plants again. Um, I'm going to propagate some of this basil. Um, I'll probably do that today. This tiny Tim tomato plant actually has a little tomato on it. So that's cool. Got some radishes popping up here. We've got some onions that have germinated here. Those are the bunching onions. Uh, it looks like some of the lettuce is trying to come up, so that's good. Got more things coming in down there. Okay, so under this netting, we have our cabbage. Some of them look really good. Others look a little puny, but I think they will do okay. 
Um, I do have some weeding to do in here. We put the mesh on here mostly to keep the birds out. The birds kept getting in here. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is come through here and plant some radishes, do some interplanting. Uh, these also look really good. So that is what is happening in the garden so far. Um, so like I said, I've got some things that I can be doing while the, gra the ground is drying up, such as suckering the tomatoes, tying them up, and um, maybe doing some weeding, but I can't really do a whole, whole lot until the ground dries up some more. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this garden update and until next time. Be vigilant, be prayerful, and be prepared.